This is Apple's latest iPhone, the 2022 iPhone SE. Apple's cheap model refreshed with new specs. And I think no one should buy it. It's got a super outdated design with garbage screen. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No one should buy the iPhone SE? I mean, come on, that's a little harsh. All right, who are you? How did you get in my house? And what do you mean? I actually think this is a great phone for people who want a classic design and a low price. For those people, this is basically the only option. All right, no. No, 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 no. No one should buy this phone. It's got the old design from the 2014 iPhone 6 with that 4.7 inch display, those massive black bars on the top and bottom of the screen, that single camera and that nipple at the bottom. And Apple still thinks this is okay to sell in 2022 for $430. But you see, those two things you just mentioned, those are the selling points of this phone. Those are good things about it. This thing is not meant to be a Galaxy S22 Ultra. It's a mid-range phone. And that $430 price point is quite attractive to more budget-conscious people, especially if they want an iPhone. And as for the design, some people don't like using gestures and all that. They just want a simple home button that they're used to. You're telling me there are still people who want an iPhone with a nipple? The way I see it is if you're not adjusted to the new standard of smartphones with bezel-less screens and gestures, you should just adapt to the new tech instead of staying stuck in the past. As for the people who want a small and affordable iPhone, they should just get a used iPhone 12 mini for the same price because it's even smaller than the SE while packing in a bigger screen and it's actually advanced with modern iPhone technology. Yeah, but the 12 mini is behind. It's got the A14 Bionic chip while this new SE is refreshed with the latest A15 chip. All right, there is a very small and subtle difference between both of those chips. And I can guarantee you literally no one will know the difference. Yeah, but they've also added 5G to this iPhone. If you want to talk 5G, yes, I'm very glad they brought it to this iPhone. The modem supports 2x2 MIMO with low, mid, and C bands. But the iPhone 12 mini, at least for US models, has 4x4 MIMO and millimeter wave with a better 5G experience. Yeah, but iPhone 12 mini battery sucks. You want to talk battery while you're holding an iPhone SE? Even with a larger battery and more optimization, the SE3's battery falls behind even the 12 mini for two reasons. Number one, the cell itself is smaller at 2,018 million hours versus 2,200. And second, the OLED display on the iPhone 12 mini is far more power efficient than the cheap LCD on the SE because OLED's pixels are individually lit, so pixels that need to be displayed as black just turn off, giving you better picture quality and better battery preservation. There are just way too many compromises for me to recommend this old design at $430. All right, but I've got one thing that saves this iPhone, one big selling point. Touch ID. Some people don't want face ID. They might wear masks a lot and that just makes it difficult. Touch ID is just better and easier. Okay, okay, two things about that. Number one, Touch ID is not worth all those other compromises. The piece of garbage 720p LCD screen, the ancient design that belongs in a museum, horrible battery life, and a price of $430. But even if we take all of that out of the picture, Face ID is just better than Touch ID. The second you pick up your iPhone, you're unlocked. No adjusting the position of your finger, no remembering which finger you register. And as for masks, who wears those anymore? The world has opened up more and most masks aren't even affected anyways. Even if you have to wear a mask, there have been software updates for Face ID that give it more accuracy if you're wearing one. All right, all right, all right, all that's fair enough. But that's just from your perspective. What about older people who might not be able to figure out the whole swipe up gestures thing? What if they're used to the home button and can't learn to swipe up and stuff? All right, I hear that argument a lot when people defend the iPhone SE. If you're gonna buy this for your grandparents, they're maybe coming from a six or a 6S or a seven or an eight, but this is just not a good option for them. It's among the smallest screens of any iPhone in the past five years, so it's hard to see for aging eyes. The nipple can be fiddly and cumbersome compared to fluid and simple gestures and Face ID is also more convenient. If you're about to buy your parents or grandparents an iPhone SE, don't. Get them an iPhone 12 or an iPhone 13 or an iPhone 13 Pro instead. The larger screens on them will be much easier for them to use, especially for making text larger. So in conclusion, no one should buy the iPhone SE, especially at $430. Exactly, and if you're interested in seeing some of the best phones of this year, definitely be sure to click the video up top. But with that, I'm Max, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.